Warning, before we get started, let's agree that lift generation is very complicated and neither Newton nor Bernoulli ever attempted to explain the aerodynamic lift of an object. As pilots, we can accept the FAA's oversimplified explanation, lift being generated by a low pressure on top of the wing and a high pressure under the wing. Truthfully, pressure variation does materialize along with velocity variation, shed vortice, and downwash. However, these are not the cause of lift generation. They are lift's effects. When using the FAA's explanation, it's important to understand that lift is perpendicular to the oncoming flow, or relative wind, and drag is parallel to that flow. If you are curious about lift generation and vector quantities, a good place to start is our Instructor's Corner. Let's do a quick review of aerodynamics. Lift is always perpendicular to the flight path, or what we call the instantaneous flight path. Now, there are thousands upon thousands of air molecules out there. And as the airplane's wing collides with these molecules, one of two things happen. One, some of them stick to the surface and actually build up and create what we call boundary layer. Two, the other molecules collide with this boundary layer and transfer their momentum to the boundary layer. But because we are dealing with a gas, that is our air, Forces in one direction can affect the momentum in another direction. And that is part of why lift is perpendicular to the flow. Now, this 90 degree conversion, I like to call the magic of flight. If somebody would have told me about vector quantity and 90 degree conversion years ago, it would have saved me many hours of heated hangar talk. What I'm going to show you next may also look like magic. Watch as I move this elevator back here. See the airplane rotating? Well, look real close at the leading edge. See how the leading edge is changing its angle to the oncoming flow? Well, this is actually rotation. Now I'll turn on the weight vector, and the weight vector is actually set to the center of gravity of the airplane. Now watch this. See how the airplane is rotating on the center of gravity? Now that we have identified the rotation point, the other end of the lever is the tail section. So let me turn on the force is back here. Now if I apply a force, move the elevator I mean, you can see how the arm of the lever is pivoting on the weight vector or center of gravity and that action is rotating the leading edge. If you can grasp this simple concept of lever action, you are on your way for many hours of enjoyable flight. Now I'm going to turn on protractors. These protractors the green, yellow, and red scales are actually magnifying this leading edge movement. Let me show you. I'll bring the camera around. There you go. See how the protractors are attached to the airplane and showing the movement? Okay, then I'm going to turn on lift vectors. Now these lift vectors will show you that by changing this angle, I am actually changing the force, the lifting force, on the wing. And that's what angle attack is all about. You, the pilot, are controlling the lifting force on the wing by using the elevator and lever action to create the force. Now, most people think that the airplane flies because of how the wing is designed. But that's only half the story. If I took this airplane 
went down the runway as fast as I could, it would not take off until I applied angled attack. So now the lifting force, this green and yellow area for an airplane to fly, it requires that lift equals weight. And it only works in this green to yellow area. And you can see here that our lift and weight are basically equal. Now, I'm going to bring up an angle of attack indicator. And you can see that at lower angles, this leading edge rotation is similar to, but not identical to, angle of attack movement. Now, if I was to put this angle of attack indicator in the airplane, you as a pilot could determine what your angle is to the flight path. Let's talk about the range of angle of attack. When we use the word angle of attack, most of us think of the critical angle of attack, this red area, or the stall area, or where lift is less than weight. But I want to talk about this area, the green to yellow area. Now, look down at this. This airplane is doing 200 knots, and if you add the left wing and the right wing's lift, you get pretty close to the weight after you subtract the countering tail lift. Now, look at the angle of attack. It is basically zero, or it is zero on our gauge here. And that's how we normally think an airplane flies. Now I'll reduce the power and we will get another reading. Hey, this is uh, at uh, a speed of 137. Uh, we have just basically the 1989. So lift is equal to weight and our angle of attack is about 1.5. Now I'll reduce the power and we'll do this again. This is our third reduction of power and airspeed, and now we are doing 74 knots with an angle of attack of 7.77. You can see that our range of angle of attack is working well for us as we're varying the speed and maintaining altitude. Now the next question is, what will happen to angle of attack if we select flaps? Okay, who lost the bet? All right, in this airplane, we're doing 74 knots, we're clean, and our angle of attack is 7.77. In this picture, we're full flaps, which, remember, changes the cord line, because the cord line goes from the leading edge to the trailing edge, so your cord line has changed. You're doing 72 knots, and your angle of attack is 1.76. I'll bet that surprised a lot of you. Now that we understand the range of the working wing, there are known angles in that range that will work for, let's say, best cruise, uh, best glide, best approach speed, and many more. Now, the good thing about these angles are that they do not change due to fuel burnoff or change in weight. Knowing these sweet spots is really helpful during a flight, especially under heavy workload. Just ask any Navy pilot. The last question is, why does Alpha Trainer use angles instead of units? And the answer is that we believe that you can better visualize the elevator's role in changing angle of attack by knowing the angles.